Welcome everyone. We'll see in this video why and how Bitcoin price goes up or down and why it fluctuates rather rapidly, compared to most of the commodities like gold or foreign currencies. Bitcoins don't come from vaults and they don't come out of the network. They come from persons who have them. It's like gold. If you want to buy it, you need to find someone who has it. And how do I do if I want to find someone who does have bitcoins? Places have been created to put together the people selling bitcoins with those looking to buy them. Those places are virtual. They're called exchanges. They're like marketplaces. And it's almost as if you were simply posting ads there. If you want to buy bitcoins, you leave a coupon, if you wish to sell, you leave a coupon. And here's a stall, where offers are displayed. Imagine that there are three red coupons, one tagged 5,000, another at 10,000, and one last at 15,000. Here's a buyer. Russ. Rusty Nail wanders at that marketplace, looking for offers when he sees that there are three coupons. Rusty Nail isn't stupid, he's going for the best available option, at 5,000. One day later, Early Bird comes at the marketplace. Earl sees there are only two coupons available. One at 10,000, one at 15,000. Early Bird wants to buy, and he's smart, he picks up the cheapest one, at 10,000. And so on. If during the following days, there are only buyers, price will keep going up. Sales become scarce and the remaining offers prices would go higher and higher. The more there are buyers, the more the coupons tags will go up. Imagine now that there are four red coupons. Three of them at 5,000 and one at 10,000. You understand that there must be three buyers, before someone approaches the coupon tagged 10,000. So the more there are offers, the less the price moves quickly? Yes. If we exaggerate a bit, imagine a large jar containing dozens of red coupons tagged 5,000. And a couple of red ones tagged 10,000. The whole jar must be emptied of the coupons tagged 5,000 before anyone would touch the coupons tagged 10,000. So, with the same quantity of bitcoins available, the more there are buyers, the higher the price will go. We can imagine a future where the jar is so large, that the price can be considered stable. Other scenario now. When price goes down, this time, imagine that next to the three red coupons we've seen before, there are other coupons of another kind. Green ones. One tagged 5,000, one tagged 2,000 and one tagged 1,000. So. A stall, three red coupons, three green coupons. Now, if our friend Earl is selling bitcoins, he'd see when passing by the stall, that the most interested buyer is ready to spend 5,000 only. Earl would therefore sell his Bitcoin to that buyer. Next seller arriving later would see that only two coupons remain. One at 2000 and one at 1000. Therefore, he'd have to accept the offer at 2000. And so on, the more sellers there are, the more the price drops. In the same way, if there's a large jar full of green coupons, the price will go down less quickly, as the sellers will find lots of buyers. As long as there are people ready to buy at 5,000, the seller would obviously not go below. In effect, the exchanges are online platforms where you can find huge, gigantic jars. One full of red ones tagged at 10,000 and one full of green ones tagged at 5,000. Price changes then according to buy and sell offers. By the way, everything explained to you here is true for any type of market you could observe. Stocks, exotic cars, real estate, luxury watches, etc. So the price of Bitcoin really comes from the will of buyers and sellers to trade Bitcoins at a certain amount. What to also take out from this, is that there is no regulatory entity here. The price depends on the collective pressure. How many persons are looking for red coupons? How many are looking for green ones? So as for many other things, one could say there's no real value intrinsic to the Bitcoin but that the value derives from a consensus. Pause. Does it mean that if it has no intrinsic value, it is worthless? Not at all. 
I'll explain in more detail later why this isn't the case specifically for Bitcoin. We'll explain what makes that Bitcoin is impregnable and we'll delve into the distinctions between price and value. But for the purpose of this video, let's agree that the value of Bitcoin is driven by the price that individuals are willing to pay for it. So, why price increases? Because the collective pressure from the buyers is greater than the pressure from the sellers. How about volatility? It's the translation of all those people's collective actions of buying and selling. If you think Bitcoin's worth more than what its tag price, you'll be tempted to buy. If you think it's worth less than its tag price, you'll skip your turn and may even wish to sell some of yours. Volatility somehow reflects in real time the questionings of all buyers and sellers. Why? Right now, Rusty Nail is wondering. He'll face a choice. To buy or not to buy. If Russ buys, he will influence the price through his purchase. He would also influence the price if he decides to sell. In fact, even if he doesn't buy, he would still influence the price somehow affecting the volatility. His coupon won't be in our famous jars, volatility will be greater as there will be less coupons. High volatility simply means that there are not so many people interested, whether in buying or selling. Volatility can also reflect strong correlation in people's behavior, as they influence each other, acting by mimicry. In such case, decisions are less and less rationale. Crises or bubbles point their nose precisely when purchases and sales become irrational. Again, this is valid for all prices. Not only for Bitcoins. So the more there will be people believing in Bitcoin, the less there will be volatility and the higher the price will likely be. That's it for today folks. If you like what we're doing, subscribe and share this video as it will help developing this channel.